the economy's strong, inflation's coming down a little bit, but interest rates are going up. Are we saying goodbye to the Fed lowering interest rates by 50 basis points? Is that now off the table with the strength of this economy? Yeah, I think it almost looks ridiculous that they did that big a cut given the fact that we had that labor market number come in last week, which is just phenomenal, right? 254,000 jobs. I mean, completely surprised everybody. I've been calling for a strong labor market for the record. But, you know, I think the point here is if the economy is actually accelerating in growth, which it is, we're at about a 3% growth rate in the U.S. here. We've got a strong, strong labor market. Short-term inflation is moderating. However, longer term, we've got oil prices going up. Um, and we have stronger growth. Why is the Fed cutting interest rates so aggressively and so quickly here? That might actually be a miscalculation. Well, what does the market do? Well, I think the market's telling you, and the 10-year at 4%, right, that's, that's a lot higher than it's been, is saying that longer-term inflation is going to be higher. And if I'm allocating a portfolio that says, I want to have inflation hedges in my portfolio, I've got to have places, money, money in places in my portfolio that actually hedges against inflation. Like what, a 4.5% money fund? that pays you a safe four and a half percent or a utility yeah. that pays me five or six percent dividend? Yeah, if it's, if it's dividend paying stock, that's a great place to hide out because dividend paying stocks actually are great inflation hedges. However, money market funds aren't so great because short term rates are coming down. Right. So you've always I've been talking about this every week, but you have like literally you have six point five trillion dollars sitting in money market funds as that every day that rate goes down a little bit lower. It was at five percent. Now it's four point six percent. Fed's going to continue to cut. But I mean, like, it's kind of like death by a thousand cuts. Um, so the question is, where is that money going to go? And I argue, if the Fed continues to be this aggressive with their monetary policy and cutting, you're overheating the economy. You're going to force a lot of money in places like the stock market, which is going to create that melt up I've been talking about every week. We've kind of been in the midst of that. So what should I buy today? I'm glad you asked. Uh, so I think you have to be, you know, skate where the puck is going to be, as they say. Um, you know, again, growth stocks, tech stocks are not a great inflation hedge. In fact, they've underperformed the last three months, only more interest rate sensitive places like you just mentioned, like utilities, uh, industrials, if you look at materials, anything commodity based. Also, with this deficit spending, you want to have a global portfolio, like emerging markets are growing much faster than the U.S., uh, revenue growth can be faster over there. And if the dollar continues to weaken, those global assets will actually appreciate against the dollar. So a global portfolio, uh, you want to have commodity-based exposure, anything with dividends, and it, all that stuff trades relatively cheap versus just buying the S&P 500 blindly, which is just a tech fund and drag, which I've been saying. And most investors, they're not properly allocated right now. Is a Harris win a, a problem for the market? I think it speaks to more inflation because that deficit spending is not going to go away. There's, there's plenty of programs. They're going to spend money on the fiscal disciplines. Not coming anytime soon. You've got to have an inflation hedge portfolio, and most people don't. Got it. Thanks, Ryan.